My name is Anthony Wa. I'm a British and US trained consultant endoscopic surgeon and neurologist. Today I'd like to go about how I would advise patients to undertake vestibular rehabilitation exercises. Now there's a very popular and effective mode of exercises uh, under the penonous name of Colton Cooksey exercises, which a lot of patients would find very helpful. I won't go into this as it's readily available. You would have ready access to getting that online. I'd like to specifically talk about the gaze stabilization exercises that I tend to use for my patients. These exercises are of great benefit in patients with one-sided inner ear dysfunction or even indeed both inner ear dysfunction. It's also suitable for patients with stable central balance problems. However, it is of limited value in patients with BPPV, uh, in which the lesion tends to resolve spontaneously. It's also limited value in patients with meniere's, migraines, and non vesper balance problems. First, I'll advise them to get a much colored wallpaper and write either the letter E or the number 8 on it. The reason for that is a wallpaper has a very busy side and a plain white side and if they're unable to cope with the visual distortions that the colored side would bring, I will get them to flip the side and they'll have a more gentle rehabilitation if they can't cope with the first one. If they can't do that, I generally ask them to get a card instead. And what I generally want them to do is to use either the card or that letter E on the 8 as a focal point for them to focus on. So assuming this is the exercise, the first exercise would be asking them to put the card in front of them and with their eyes fixed on the card to move their head from side to side. I take off my glasses, you can see my eyes. It's fixed on the card and move it from side to side like that. And then I turn to doing it up and down, up and down, with the eyes fixed on the card. I usually warn the patients that they may well have an initial period of difficulty doing it, might feel dizzy doing it. And if they do feel dizzy doing it, should persevere. Short spells done frequently are much better than prolonged spells, which they exhaust the system done infrequently. The second exercise, similar, put the card out in front of you, or still use a wallpaper, but a card would be ideal because I'm going to move both the card and the head in opposite directions with the eyes fixed on the card, like so. Eyes on the card, card drifting to one side, head drifting to the opposite side, but the eyes are fixed on the card, and you do that. So the eyes are fixed on the card. You can do the same thing up and down. Sorry, you're trying to stabilize the image on the light sensitive part of the red, of the eye, and that would help to control or compensate, help with the compensation mechanism for your balance. Now, third exercise, I get them to hold a card in front of them, and I'll swing around as if I'm swinging there a bat or a golf shot, but I'm moving from side to side. And that has the advantage that the background is moving as well, while the eyes are fixed on the card, like that. The fourth and final exercise that I would give to patients that see me, if they are not able to get access to other forms of rehabilitation, I'll ask them to imagine that they're in a shop with things that they like on both sides of the aisle. It may be chocolate, it may be diamonds, but imagine them on both sides of the aisle. And they walk from one side of this imaginary shop to the other, going chocolates, diamonds, chocolates, diamonds, and walking from one side to the other. If they're able to do that on a firm surface, unsupported with bright lights, then I'll try and make them to do it under more difficult circumstances, which may involve them walking barefooted 
on a carpeted surface. And if they're able to do that and able to work on support it, to dim the lights a bit so as to reduce the visual input when they're walking around. And that should heighten their balance compensatory uh, mechanism. And then generally asking them to go and walk to help. I will demonstrate. So they're walking from one side of the aisle, they're going chocolates, diamonds, walking straight towards you. I'll do it to the side. Chocolates, diamonds, chocolates, diamonds. I generally ask them to do it frequently, but in short spells. And once they go past that, to go on long walks in the park or even in the garden, and that should greatly help with their balance compensatory mechanism. I certainly do not want them on medications as that interferes with the process. I hope you find this clip.